Hi, Scott Weaver with Factory Direct Designers Workroom. Well, today we're going to have a lesson on how to make this valance right here. It's a kick pleat arched style valance. And what we're going to be going over is how to make the actual pattern for it. It has a kick pleat here, kick pleat here, and then kick pleats on the corners. Very structured, very tailored type of look if you're into that. Then follow me. I'll be back in a second. Hi everyone. Okay, today we're going to be making this valance right here. It's a kick pleated valance. So I want to give you the formula first. Uh, this whole valance is going to be 50 inches wide and it's going to be put mounted on a two and a half inch board. Let me show you what the board looks like. This is the board right here we're mounting it on and the return is the thickness here and that's two and a half inches that's what it's going to pro project away from the wall when it's mounted and that's called the return so we're just going to quickly go over the formula here um, it's going to be 10 inches before it hits the uh, first kick pleat it's going to be 30 inches in the center or in the, to the second one and then another 10 inches and it's going to have this arch so the first thing we have to do is calculate how much material we need. Um, I'm going to start over here. It has a two and a half inch return. So we have a two and a half inch return here and a two and a half inch return. So here we need five inches for that. Then we have what's called a half kick pleat here and a half kick pleat. And I like to use six inches. It could be five. Um, I don't recommend anything less than five. But I like to put six inches in each one of these kick pleats. So that's another 12 inches here. And then in each one of these, it's also going to be 12 inches. So here's 12 and 12 is 24 inches. And then the last measurement we have here is the whole thing is going to end up being 50 inches. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to add this all the way up. And that's how much material that we're going to need to begin to make this okay, valve. So we came up with 91 inches. However, we need a half inch of sewing allowance on the left side and a half inch sewing about allowance on the right. So we have to add another inch to that. So that would be 92 inches. So I went ahead and I cut a piece that's 92 inches wide. Um, and it, it's going to be a 16 inch drop to the center. I'm sorry, to the to the uh, the longest point, and then it's going to be um, 12 inches to the center. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start marking off for these pleats, and we're first going to start with the return. So I'm going to back this up so you can see what I'm doing here. The return is a two and a half inch, as explained, going on this board. It's two and a half inches thick. You need an extra half inch to go around it. Uh, for the sewing, so it's three inches. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to mark three inches. And by the way, this is my pattern. This is not the fabric I'm actually using because I won't be putting <laughs> magic marker on it. All right, so that is what we call the return. And I'm going to go ahead and put a line right down it. Next, we have this half pleat right here. Right in here is your half kick pleat, which I we, we determined is going to be six inches. So we go ahead and we're going to put it six inches. Put 
draw a line. Now from there, we have a 10 inch, right here is going to be a 10 inch space before the next kick pleat starts. On this kick pleat, we determined we're going to use 12 inches for this whole kick pleat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this off 12 inches, but I'm also going to put a mark at 6 inches because uh, you'll see in a few minutes, this is a full one and it's how the fabric has to fold into it. So stay tuned for a second, that will be explained to you. So we have a mark at 12 and we have a mark at 6. Okay. Next up is the 30 inches of flat that's going in between these two kick pleats. So we have 30 inches here. Now next up is this kick plate, and this kick plate is another 12 inches, and again we're going to put in between the 12, we're going to put a mark at the halfway point which would be 6 inches. There's that. Now we have another 10 inches between this full kick pleat and this half kick pleat. So go ahead and mark the 10 inches. And from there, we've got the, this, the 10 inches. Now we have to deal with this half kick pleat. Again, right here, which is six inches. It's always half of what the full one is. The full one's being 12. The one on the end only requires a half a kick pleat. It is six inches. And this leaves me a remainder of three inches for my return. Now, next part is we're going to go ahead and pleat this before we actually shape it. So let me get some pins here. I've got to get some pins. Now it's also a good idea to put notches, and I'm, I'm famous for my little notches, we don't need this now. And the little notches are just the little V's, you don't have to do this, but I like to do it. Uh, because I want these notches also, uh, these are pleating notches, and I want them to be carried over onto my fabric. I will also put a link or I will um, put a little flash card up there. Um, I'm not going to show you exactly how to sew this and pleat it. I, I will show you how to pleat it. But I do have other videos regarding how to um, sew other shape balances that I've made.
can see I put these V's directly in the center of where this line is. It's just a little notch, a little V notch. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it on the bottom also. Again, you don't have to do this. It's kind of a formality, but I, um, something I, when I, when I was taught, this is how I was taught to do it. And I just keep carrying it through. And, uh, personally for myself, I, at this point I don't really need to, but I want to teach you the same way I always taught. Carrying on a tradition. Dating back almost 30 years, that's how old I am. Actually, longer than 30 years. Can't believe it's been that long already. Okay, now I'm going to put one other line on here, but I'm not going to put a V in it. I'm just going to put a line. That line is going to represent the halfway mark on this valance. So here's the valance right here. And it's like I'm cutting it in half. Boom, boom, boom. Right here, I'm going to put a, a line right across right where the center point of it is. Actually, I am going to put a little notch in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my hat, my fabric in half. I'm going to make sure my notches, that's a good point of putting these notches on, all line up. That tells you if you've made a mistake or not. If they don't line up, you've got problems. I'm going to put a little V right here, and that tells me the center point of my balance. Because technically, I don't have to pleat this whole balance up. I only need to pleat half of it up. And then I'll check it afterwards. Okay, so there's my halfway point of my balance. Now let's pleat. I'll start with my end. This is my half pleat. I keep talking about a half a kick pleat, and I'll show you why. This one right here, which is the second line over, you're going to bring it over so it meets this line, which is where your return is. Just like that. Gonna stick at least one pin in each. Follow me so far? Now, here's the second. This is a full kick plate. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this line, which is the 10 inches, that's this 10 inches right here, and we're gonna fold it back to the center. Remember this is 12 inches but I put a line at a halfway point which is 6 inches. And another pin. And another pin at the bottom. There's my 10 inch box. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to bring it over here. This is making my full pleat right here, full kick pleat. Okay, that's what we have going on so far. Now if you recall, 
I put this line here, which is directly half of this valance. That's what that line. Because this is all I have to do for now. I only have to deal with half the valance. This part here is what you call the short point before it starts arching down to the long point. The long point being 16. I cut this material like 17 and a half. To give myself a little half inch overage here, I believe that's what I did. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can cut just 17. And why did I do that? Because you need a half inch sewing allowance on the bottom. You need a half inch for the top. So that's where I came up with my 17. On this here, look at my sheet here. This is going to be 12 inches um, to the short point of the valance. That means I want an extra inch, so that's going to be 13. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a line at the 13. Okay, now we're going to arch this. There's two ways I can do this. I can just freehand it or I can use a shaping string. And what I like to use is what's called a chain weight. Um, the chain weight is uh, a lead weight. It's covered in fabric. You can maybe pick it up at a Joann's fabric store or order it online, um, however you want to do it. Now remember I said I've cut this over a little bit and it's about a half inch over. And I'm going to keep it back down to 17 inches because that's what I need. Seeing this is my long point. Now this piece right here is the return. And to explain it a little bit better, this is my board. This is the face or the front of my balance going like this. And right where this notch is, this is going to go wrap around my board like that to cover my board. So what I'm doing here is I want that part to be straight. Which you'll see on this side, it doesn't represent, I won't show you that side, but you see where it's straight and then it starts. And that's because it's straight around where it's wrapped around the board, which is called your return. And that's what I just did mark that. I've got my short point marked right here. I'm going to take my shaping string. I'm going to take my shaping string and I'm going to bring it around, make an arch. I'm looking at it upside down, but it doesn't look too bad. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it. Like that. Now again, I'm only using half the balance, and it's it's more accurate when you're making up a pattern that you're only making you're only making up um, half of your pattern. And then what I do is I'm going to fold this in half and get my other half out of what I'm making here. It's more accurate that way. So now I'm going to leave those pins there, and I'm going to also pin put extra pins up here. Back this pin up a little bit. Now I'm going to cut it out.
So there's half. Now I'm going to open it up. And you get all these little jagged edges. And you can see this one comes over here. And that one comes over like that. Interesting how that works. Now I'm going to do one other thing here. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to put it back for a second. I'm going to show you a little trick you may want to do. But when you're sewing this, what you don't want is a little peekaboo like this showing like that. You want to make sure that that's all kind of um, hidden. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these pins back in and I'm going to show you a little trick. This is optional, you don't have to do it this way, but I, I like to. Okay, right in here, where this arch is, like I said, you don't want to see any of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away just a little bit of it, maybe like a quarter of an inch. Going right to that point, I'm just tapering it right to the point. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just cutting away a little bit of it. Like that. And here. Because my concern is right into this area right here. That I don't want that to peek out like that. So that's why I'm just cutting a little bit of it away. like so. Now we'll open it back up. And that's what you have. Now you can even go a little farther with it if you want. Since this goes over you see this right here, you can actually eliminate, let's see, can you, let's see, whoop, that goes like that. So you're not going to see that, you can straighten this out. There's nothing you can do about that, since this one comes over like that. There's nothing you can do, but we'll see what that looks like. All that does is when you're sewing it, it makes it just a little easier when you're sewing. Okay, now we got that settled. We're going to go ahead and take this whole valance. We're going to fold it in half. We have these top notches. We're going to make sure it's even with the top notches. Like that. And as you can see where the lines are, making sure your lines are even. You want to make sure you get an exact replica on this half of it. Lines to lines, it's perfect. At this point, if you want, you can go ahead and pin it. I'm not going to bother pinning it, but you can if you want.
Okay. Now we're going to pleat the whole thing up so you can see what it looks like. We're going to take a measurement on it. Both sides are exactly the same. That's half. Now I know my balance is going to come out 50 inches, but um, going with this formula, using the same formula, you should be able to now figure out any size. Balance based on the information here. At least I'm hoping you can. Okay, now this is what the balance looks like when it's done. And when it gets put on the board, this is going to break open. So you're going to see that, and if you put like, like a nice brush fringe on here or something on the bottom, it's really going to make a pop. And let me see if I can find a tape measure around here to measure it. So what we're concerned about is the face from here to here and I'm about a quarter inch off. It's about 49 and three quarters right now. Very close. And you're going to get there from time to time and all you have to do if that happens, well you can measure each side to see if they're exact. And that's not. That's about nine and seven eighths, roughly around there. This one's a little off. So you find where it's off a little bit, and you can pull the material out just a little bit at the top. Won't interfere at all with the bottom. It doesn't take much. So there you have it. Let's see if I can pin it onto the board for you. Just so you get an idea of how it's going to look. Actually, what I'll do is I'll staple it on the board. This is how it would be mounted if you're going to uh, make this balance. 
And my recommendation, when you've got it all sewn up, this is just a pattern, of course, when you have it all sewn up, put one staple on one end, go to the other end, make sure it fits, stretch it if it needs to be. If it doesn't, you might have to take in a pleat. Even after it's sewn, you may, you never know. But it's always good to put one staple on one end, go to the other end, put another staple in. You know, I was never one to follow patterns, paper patterns. I can't, I, I could never stand a paper pattern. The little patterns you make for the valances. First of all, they're never full enough. They're never deep enough. Um, they give you skimpy little plates. And, you, and, and my feeling is you want things that are cuffed to them. You want a deep pleat so that can break open. You don't have to worry about what you're looking at. Now we're going to go around the return like so and keep in mind this is going to hang over because it hasn't been sewn yet. So we've got it at three at uh, three inches it's a two and a half inch board but this will give you an idea of what it's going to look like when it's done. The other thing you want to do when you actually sew this up, you want to come and press before you put it on the board. You're going to want to take an iron and press these pleats in. Keep it all pinned after you after you pin everything in. Keep the bottoms pinned. Keep everything pinned in and press it. Press all those little folds in, and that'll just help it. Even coming around this this here you're going to want to press this around too. So that's how you make this valance. And I um, hope you enjoyed the uh, video. And um, you can always go on my website for more tips and tricks. It's Factory Direct Designers Workroom. Thank you very much for watching and have a good morning, afternoon, or evening. Thanks for watching.